and I am going to welcome everyone to this day's Wednesday webinar. Today, we're going to be talking about customer service, keys to su successful retention. This is part of a series that we offer twice a month. You can see the upcoming webinars that we'll have through uh, June and July. And here in this blue link, you can register for those, and you can also go back and view any of the previously recorded webinars. As I mentioned, we are recording. It'll be posted online along with all the slides that will be presented today. So with that, um, I am excited to turn over the presentation to Ginger Myers. Uh, she's going to be talking about customer service and keys to customer retention. Again, if you have any questions, please add those to the chat pod. All right, Ginger, you are muted, so we'll need to get you unmuted here. Gotcha. Okay, thank you, Shannon, and thank you for everyone who joined here today, taking some time to uh, listen about customer service. And it really is about customer retention as well. You know, we work so hard to, to get a customer and the satisfaction of them being our customer and purchasing from us is great, but it really stings when you realize you've lost customers as well. So today we're going to talk a little bit uh, about customer service and some certain points. Uh, first, though, I'll, I'll introduce myself. Uh, I am the marketing specialist for agriculture and food systems with the University of Maryland Extension. I uh, work in direct marketing, particularly with ag entrepreneurs, new markets, beginning farmers and uh, developing businesses. I also am the director of the Maryland Rural Enterprise Development Center, which is a 24-7 uh, web-based business development site. And I'll share that, that email with you later on. My husband and I also operate a grass-based livestock farm. We direct market uh, meat, eggs, chickens, um, and vegetables at this point. So I understand that the angst of getting customers and losing customers and the journey in between. And anytime you work with people, there's going to be a journey in between. So with that, uh, we'll get started here with a question. And if you could write this in the chat so we can maybe share this a little bit. Uh, when you think of the definition of customer service, what kind of words come to mind or what phrases? And we'll just pause here and give people a chance to reflect on that a little bit quickly. You can write it in the chat or just make a note wherever you're at with some words and maybe you'll want to share those if we get a chance here for a minute. Would anyone like to share if uh, if you can unmute or if Shannon can unmute you and we'll we'll share some of those phrases? Yeah, we're getting some great uh, feedback. Uh, they're replying to just me. So when you guys do use the chat, if you want to use all participants, you can share comments with everyone. We have um, communication, answering questions, serving, friendly, small, service-oriented, meeting needs. Oh, and Brenda says the customer is always right, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right or wrong, they're right. <laughs> That's, that's great feedback, and I'm just going to uh, share some attributes here. And we heard those, you know, the customer and friendly, um, positive, uh, also precise and t timely. Sometimes don't come into the picture, but those are attributes that we're going to discuss a little more today. So, in this presentation, we're going to look at the relationship between customer service and customer satisfaction. Sometimes we forget that having a satisfied customer is really always our goal, and sometimes customer service has to intervene to make sure that happens, and, and remember that, that concept of customer satisfaction. We'll identify some of the qualities of excellent customer service. Um, sometimes it's harder to do some of them than others, but remember what those qualities are. A brief uh, discussion about how to handle difficult customers, and we all run into that. In certain days, it's easier than others, but we'll, we'll give some tips on that. And certainly, uh, customer service on, in the online world is a little different these days, and with uh, how we're marketing and, and having online presence and sales, 
this comes uh, forward and, and questions about how do I do that when I can't see someone face to face or we can't chat directly. And that feeds right into how enhancing your communication skills. So with that, we'll get started further in. And of course, if the question always comes, why people buy? Well, we're talking about customer service. Why do they buy? Well, it's certainly they buy because they're looking for a solution to their problem, uh, a want, to need, um, came out to, to buy something they want to fix, something they want to eat, something they want to do. Uh, for most of us, we see our work as, as the final product, you know, the tomatoes on the counter or the, the beef in the freezer. But people come out to think about what they need, not particularly how they it got there to begin with, uh, that journey. And so uh, Peter Drucker, who is a business guru, really reminds us that we're seeking a different end product, not just what you produced, but that satisfied customer. And that's from the earlier slide, too, where customer service is about helping you create that satisfied customer who will be a retained customer then, hopefully. So you, you can uh, search the internet and find a couple different statistics on why customers leave a business. You know, we know in, for instance, CSAs that you can anticipate losing about a third of the customers or, or a turnover in customers a year. And around here, one of the big factors is that people move a lot. And because we have military um, installations where people come and go or um, working government that, that they move around, we see a churn rate there why people stop or go. But here are some statistics from traditional uh, retail sales. And you can see that, that competition is really not as great as you thought it was going to be. Uh, sometimes people just aren't happy with the product, and you can't please everyone. But that 68% there about in different attitudes of salespeople really should pop out that the folks that are, are making that sale, making that connection, can make or break keeping customers. And, of course, you know, as it says there, a lot of times you won't even know why they leave. They just leave. And so this is a reminder to check your repeat sales list if you have – um, a store like in Shopify or Square, you can actually go back to your analytics and see who who's buying, last time they bought, how many sales, and if, if folks are starting to fall down the line there for some reason, you should be aware that these are the folks who have just left and not told you, and you may want to reach back out to them. So we're going to progress on, uh, on what are the good quality points for evaluating customer service. That little picture there, um, nasty, they wrote that in ketchup, but I know we've all experienced a long wait, uh, particularly in a restaurant where you get seated and no service for a long time. Folks have a very short tolerance. Uh, we know now in the present situation where folks have to wait in line to go into stores or uh, distance to check out, that's a little different because of how that's been imposed. But in, in the Normally, we don't want to wait. We have in our minds kind of a, an automatic clock as to how long it should take for something to happen, particularly in a sales transaction. And that's one of the reasons that online sales are so popular. It's click, click, and go. But when we look at evaluating quality uh, customer service, people looking for reliability. Can they get in touch with you? Are they going to know that you're going to service an account? I know just recently uh, we installed a, a slimline air conditioner in our store, and the two contracts were not that much different, the quotes uh, on price, but one had a much better um, guarantee as far as uh, quality of the product and service, and, and that made a, a difference in our selection. They want assurance that you're going to listen or there's a way to have a complaint or have their uh, concerns addressed. Often in customer service, um, a thank you will go a long way. Tangibles are often uh, also very helpful. We've all been to the restaurant where the service was really slow, and perhaps the manager came out and, and comped something, the drinks in the menu or desserts. Or, they're, you know, People love when they get a little, I know it wasn't right, but here, let me help a little bit 
kind of tangibles. Certainly empathy. Um, customer service oftentimes is more about listening and giving that, that stage for them to express their unhappiness uh, and not push back, but to say that you understand why they are upset um, and why that makes a difference. And then responsiveness. They, they want something, either a thank you or they want it corrected. Um, but this can also be on, on your end. If there's been a problem, how are you going to fix this so it doesn't happen again? What is your response to a customer um, complaint or product problem that's been brought to you by a customer? Not all of us have the skill sets to, to be good at customer service. I think um, at, at my uh, processor for our meets, the person on the phone, she is just right. She can listen to every rant and rave. Her voice never changes. She's calm. She gets me through to whoever I need to talk to. And, and you'll run into that in customer service positions with a service garage, usually as someone who's very good with the traits you see listed around this little orbit going on about being able to be patient and tactful and, and uh, give attention to details. And the skill sets of, of your operation, perhaps it's not you. And that's okay because um, you need to find then someone else who, who can do this. There's a husband and wife team, uh, Jack and Becky Gurley, some of you may know, who are vegetable growers in Baltimore County. And uh, they do a lot of farmers markets. And Jack will say he does he should not go to farmers markets because he can't stand it when somebody squeezes their tomatoes and says, "Oh, I could grow these much better ones." It makes him cringe. He gets a look on his face. It's not good customer service. Whereas as Becky can engage in conversation and 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 nod and, and be positive about it, so that they know who has which skill sets to do good customer service. And if you don't have it, find someone else in your operation who does or try to develop this. But you're going to have to be uh, calm. That's the biggest factor I see with good customer service skills is people are calm and they listen and they don't react quickly. So what are you going to do with the angry customer? And we've, we've all had this, someone who gets up in your face or calls on the phone and is very short. Um, you, you can't sense whether they're what they're going to say next. They may even be a little abusive about it. So so how do you handle that that uh, crabby customer as I like to call them? Well first off don't argue. You know, take a deep breath. As I said, that person who can stay calm and listening is going to be able to engage with this person much better. Uh, to be able to get to that second point where you have to listen carefully to what are they so angry about. Was it about the product or was it about their buying experience? Or was it that they were disappointed when they got home and didn't understand how to use it or prepare it? Or perhaps, uh, you know, there was something in it, maybe uh, some kind of insect that, that hadn't got cleaned out. What is it they were so angry about? Um, if you listen carefully, you'll then be able to sculpt that discussion back using perhaps a, an apologizing with, you know, that reflective communication skills we talked about, where you can echo back to them what you think you heard they were upset about. If it's not correct, they're going to correct you again, and you'll be able to have a dialogue then where you can really start to pinpoint about what is it that really tripped their trigger and and had them so upset that they would call you or write to you um, or perhaps even do a, a social post? And at that point, you need to show some empathy that you understand that whatever it was caused them to be upset. Sometimes things that we take for granted because we're in the production world, we don't see that perhaps from the eye of the buyer, um, they, they thought was, was less than, than uh, what they expected. One of the things I've run into in, from folks at uh, holiday time, when they buy local turkeys, sometimes the turkeys are cleaned a little differently inside from the standpoint of not that they're not safe, 
they're cleaned and safe. But uh, for someone who's never bought a local bird, that's not aware of perhaps how uh, parts are packaged in a cavity, or the lack of parts, or some extra skin on the neck, they're upset, and it's not that the bird is in any way defective, but it's their experience and, and being calm and offering answers to what are they concerned about will get you further than just saying, that's the local bird and that's how it is. So again, listen carefully because it often gives you the clues to how you can resolve this um, in a positive manner. Of course, with so much happening on social media now and online buying, it's a lot harder than being on the end of the phone where you can hear the voice and the tone and pretty much have a rapid rapid response time. With online responses, oftentimes you post and then wait someone to come back. Uh, there may be a time lag. Sometimes the interpretation of the answer isn't quite the tone you intended. But you have to remember with all the social media, um, whether it's a Facebook or a, a tweet or, or an Instagram reply, that it's rapid. And a lot of people could see it at the same time. So uh, oftentimes, quicker is better from the standpoint of uh, showing that you're attentive and you're listening to your customer. But please, please take the time to carefully read whatever you, your response back to yourself to hear whether it's the right tone, if it's really what you meant, or whether you need to just take a minute or two to, to add or delete something. Because once it's sent with, with uh, social media, it's out there and gone. And you know it can be shared with lots and lots of people. Other people see it other than just the conversation you're having uh, online through that social media. And it also may be a time that, that you go to personal messaging so you can have a little more private conversation. Um, however, I will say if someone's got something on social media where it's, it's really kind of detrimental, you need to uh, answer that in the best way you can, but don't just let it hang out there unanswered. This is a fairly old slide from the standpoint of dates, but for most of us who are now marketing direct or doing any kind of uh, uh, B2B sales, this kind of covers a time frame when we grew up and saw the advent of the power of what's coming online. You know, back in the early 80s, um, we used to say, you know, if, if somebody was happy with what they, they bought from you, they'd tell, um, you know, maybe one or two other people, but they tell seven if they weren't happy. And then we see in the 80, you know, early 80s, they were talking 10. And then you know, Jeff Bezos, of all people, 18 years ago, uh, was saying they'd tell 100 people online. Well, we know that the power of, of online sales and of all social media is the exponential effect it can have, how many people can see and respond uh, almost immediately. Now, even 10 years ago, we were, you know, well over uh, almost 1,400 people that could react from one vocal customer. Um, I didn't think, um, find a slide that, that took us 10 years forward, but I'm sure you can easily double or triple that number now with the effect, with the outreach and the, the algorithms, the way they work. So, again, the online sales are wonderful for the ability to generate sales and marketing. It can also be um, a bit of a nebulous thing for you if somebody has a customer service complaint. One of the things you can do, though, is use it to showcase, again, in your answer, how you're going to respond. And um, your responsiveness, your timeliness, your empathy can be put there. And it's not something that, that they can then delete. It's also your timely answer. So as I said, uh, with all social platforms, remember that the community is always watching. It doesn't go away. You know, I've had folks ask how to get a negative comment deleted off Facebook. You can't get it off. You can, can get it buried with a lot of positive comments that come afterwards. But it's 
it's going to be out there and people are going to see it. Um, so you need to be as transparent in your communication and answer questions personalized uh, from the standpoint. Now, you're not going to buddy-buddy, but you're going to address whatever the complaint or question was directly. Um, you can't say, you know, my family's been in, in farming for four generations and we've always grown terrific sweet corn. If the question was why the sweet corn wasn't maybe as sweet as years before, the answer would be about the variety or perhaps the growing conditions. Answer the questions uh, and make sure it's to that situation. Don't veer off um, on too many other tangents. It distracts from being able to do that direct customer service then. This was an example that I think of an, a response from a store owner and market owner when the governor first required that we have masks on in retail stores. And this is a farm market. It's a pretty large one, and they have plants, and they do a bumper business there. But we're going to have to uh, you know, do social distancing. It's going to limit how many people come in their store. But I thought his last phrase there, bear with us as we jump through more of these required hoops, really revealed more about his attitude than he might have wanted. For some folks, they would agree, oh, you know, these masks, they're a problem. Why do we have to do this? More hoops. For some, though, it may be, oh, they don't care if I could get this in their store. They're not going to take preventive measures. So remember that whatever you write can have a double-edged sword. Remember to think about your total audience in some of these times. Maybe not as personalized to, to the person, but to your target market groups. Um, you know, we see that some operations are now devo devoting certain times to at-risk customers, acknowledging that there are you know people who may be more concerned than others, and giving them preferential treatment in that way. Um, and I think everybody acknowledges that's a good thing for those folks. But the other thing is be, be careful that you don't come off on the flip side. I'm not saying you shouldn't feel one way or the other. I'm saying that, again, this is an example of when you put it out there, it's out there for everyone to see. One of the things I've found um, that helps with questions customer service-wise is to have a, an FAQ page somewhere on your website or um, a, a cheat sheet for your employees to answer. For instance, we sell halves, holes, and quarters of, of beef and hogs, and we get a lot of questions about, well, how much meat, how much does it cost, how, how much of the turnaround time? Um, and I'm happy to, if somebody writes to me and asks that, but I also get the call that says, I was on your website and I see that a half cost this much and um, has this many pounds. They've been there and got that first questions answered. You can save yourself a lot if you have an FAQ page with the most frequently asked questions. And you can design that for your product. Maybe it's the weight, maybe it's the time of year. Like when do you start taking turkey orders and what's the average weight on the birds? And, those kinds of things that you can direct uh, customers to look at. It also makes some good posting material for your social media, um, driving people to your website to look at answers on your, or your FAQ page if they're interested. And it really, again, focuses on that timely response to customer inquiries. Yes, you still want them to call and ask questions that if they need more details. But when they can find a response quickly to what they're, what they're shopping for to satisfy their want or need, you're more likely to have them click on through to make a purchase or to give you a call to order. As I said, uh, one of the best practices is to really slow down and listen to the customer feedback. Um, if it's on social media, read it a couple different times. Um, Think about what they are really saying in response, um, the personalization of emails and correspondence using folks' names or having it on a private message or direct email shows that you've taken the time to be responsive to them. The other 
thing I see oftentimes on people's web pages that it's hard to, to make a contact with someone at your farm or in your business because your phone number, your email contact isn't listed. I think while some folks say, I don't want everybody bugging me, um, not having your number there or an email contact, a way to do that, gives you the perception that, that you don't want to hear from people. Um, you make it harder for you to make that contact. I know that some folks have forms for their, for their email contact. I sometimes find that's a little more difficult. It feels a little like you're putting something in between between me and making the contact direct, but it's also often a form that's used in, in uh, website development, and I understand it's there. But uh, I really encourage you to list ways to contact you if people have questions, concerns. Yes, maybe they have complaints, but maybe they're also seeking information for themselves and others that could follow through on the sale. I uh, found this a couple of years ago that the Disney Institute had a customer service training that they called the herd method. And uh, I thought it was easy to, to understand. And of all people, certainly Disney uh, has done a wonderful job with customer service and, and how they respond to large number of people. You know, the parks could be very full. The, the, the hot sun could, could be getting to people. There's lots of different ways that, that visitors to a Disney park of any kind could be unhappy. And so how do they train their people to respond? Um, they use the herd method, which is first to hear. And we've been saying this over and over, um, to give the customer time to tell the whole story, to, to get it out. Um, and sometimes they just want somebody to listen and acknowledge. But so often we're so anxious to take care of the problem that we don't even hear the total complaint or uh, concern. The other E is for, of course, to empathize. And we've talked about this, about that you that reflective language about um, can you understand you understand how they feel with phrases like I'd be frustrated too, or oh that that had to be disappointing, or I I can understand why that would upset you. Again, you might not want to start that until you let them totally tell you the entire story, or it won't come off as authentic. A is for apologizing, um, and I have there as long as it's sincere. And we've all been in positions where we know when somebody says, oh, I'm sorry, and, and you know that it was perfunctory. Um, even if you didn't do whatever made them upset, you can be apologetic. Again, saying that, that, that you're sorry it even happened um, and acknowledging that empathy again. And then, of course, resolve. What, I can, what can I do to make it right? Sometimes you can't give them what they want. For instance, some folks will say, I want my money back. Well, perhaps your store policy or your market policy is that we don't refund money. You can replace it with perhaps product or perhaps a, a gift certificate. Or, or something else, uh, but folks, again, want that tangible, as we said earlier, some way to acknowledge that it's been resolved. Um, again, maybe it's a discount on the next visit. Come up with something that, that works for resolution and let your employees or anyone else who's in customer service working, whether it's your farm market or your, your farmer's market or perhaps your delivery route, um, to, to stores or uh, if we ever get back to restaurants there as well, that they know what the policy is to resolve issues. And if they can't, um, who, who's to call and, and how? You know, if it's not them, then if it's your name and your contact number, sometimes a person just wants to know they can get it resolved and reach out somehow. And then the D for diagnose, you know, get to the bottom of why did it happen? You know, sometimes there will be someone who did something, but um, don't look for that as much as why did it happen and fix the process so it doesn't happen again. Um, I've told a story before that we sell frozen meat, and on our packages it says, it used to say, keep frozen, keep refrigerated. 
we had an instance where a lady kept some ground beef in a refrigerator for three weeks because the package said keep refrigerated. Of course, she wasn't happy with it when she opened it. Um, we resolved that by replacing the package, but we also took that language off our label so that it couldn't happen again. It seems pretty obvious that a frozen package should stay frozen or refrigerated. Um, but when we set that in writing, we set up that personal problem there. So fix things that they don't happen again. Again, that FAQ page will help some of this, uh, but also using um, anybody who's not totally happy with what's going on or has a customer service uh, problem that, that you can fix it, that it doesn't happen again and save time down the road. So why do we go through all this? Well, remember that the title of this presentation was about customer retention. And certainly the rewards for you working on empathy and listening and resolution is to increase customer loyalty. More than ever before, having a customer loyal to you, uh, loyal to, to the regional food system now, we're questioning how many people will stay with us, but you can all look back and, and find who in your business has stayed with you and why. And the bigger that base is, the more stable uh, your profitability is going to be. Excellent customer service, a, a positive word of mouth promotion. You know, if people are happy with your product, happy with dealing with you, it's, they're going to share that word of mouth, which is third party unsolicited is the best endorsement you can get uh, on a a positive and, and um, the least expensive is to have folks who will endorse you. And this can also be um, if if they give you testimonials back, again, online, some folks will write comments back about how much they enjoy your product or what they find valuable about it. That gives you testimonials that you can put on your website, you can use in promotions. Um, these are very valuable to get. Certainly happier customers. And again, you know, people buy from people they like. And uh, so if they're, they're happy with what your product's been and buying from you and, and how that, res that um, exchange works, they're going to be more positive and bring more folks to you. And quite frankly, it's one of the things that also will, is very satisfying on your end when you find that you have satisfied, happy customers. Um, employees will be happier and more productive if they don't have to worry about uh, having customers come back and, and remember that crabby customer that could get in their face about something they had no control over. Um, it's hard enough to keep employees. If you can have fewer instances where they, they feel um, besieged, it, the better for it. And certainly makes all the working operations go smoother. And it, it gives you that competitive advantage might be uh, seem intangible, but you know perception becomes reality. If customers perceive that you've got a good product, you care about whether it's satisfying their wants or needs, it's a nice place to come shop with people that are that are happy and uh, engaging. It, it, it's all a plus all the way around. And with that, um, I haven't been watching chats. I don't know if there's any questions or any follow-up. I'm happy to take that. Ginger, that was wonderful. Thank you very much. Sure. Does anyone have any questions for Ginger? My information's there, and I promise to reply in a timely manner. <laughs> they, uh, I, we will have the, the slides posted. Um, if folks are still on, I do want to make one comment that, that I missed in the slides about responsiveness. When you have on your voicemail that you're going to get back to someone as soon as you can, if they call in with a problem, Remember that as soon as I can, for you may be that evening, as soon as I can for the person complaining or questioning, it may be an hour. Be careful how you phrase that, you know, in a certain time frame that you're, you might, you might respond that 
you know, we're out farming today. I'll get back to you as soon as I can get in from the field and sit down. Um, Mike, you know, give us a, give us a little time. Um, or if, you know, somebody will get back to you before the end of the day or whatever. But just be careful. Your perception of time and responsiveness and theirs may be very different. Um, there is a, a question here. Let's see. Um, oh, we're getting a bunch of questions now. Let's see. When it is the effort more than what it's worth to keep the customer, and how do you determine that? That's a good question. It is a good question. And I'll tell you, the example comes oftentimes when you have a CSA customer who is repeatedly late or misses their pickup date. Um, and again, you have to decide how much time and effort you can put into retaining them. If you think you need to fire a customer from time to time, uh, you may need to do that, but you need to do it in a way that they don't go tell 20 other people how you did that that, that hurt their feelings. Um, you know, in retail sales, there's the, uh, the term of threes that you do anything three times to retain a retail sale. And I think for us, we can learn from that the first time. Uh, if there's a complaint or if there's a problem, well, that's on you. Uh, the next time there's a complaint or there's a problem, that's probably on them digging for something else. The third time you run into it might be time to go different directions. All right, there's another question about um, online platform that's been more effective than others, uh, IG versus Facebook, et cetera, for small farms. Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. I will tell you that Facebook um, also owns Instagram, so you're really talking about the same platforms and algorithms, just a different visual. Um, Facebook by far has the most followers, but in, in terms of using it for business, remember it's supposed to be social. So doing too much business exchange direct on a post can, can kind of uh, have a problem with the algorithms. That may be the opportunity to go to an email where you can have discussion or even get on the phone. You know, we forget that the phone still works. So if there's a, a problem with what platform should I use to resolve this or outreach, uh, remember we still have the tools of email and the phone um, along with social media. We have several other tools to work with. So don't, don't forget those. So I will say as far as social media goes, Facebook's still the leader by far. Right, that's great. Um, we have another comment or question, and I, I think this is an art. Um, can active listening also be a form of reflective communication? One leads to the other. You have to do uh, the active listening first and then reflect back. Active listening is just what it says. You know, we, we have a service and extension. We, we do entrepreneurial coaching. And uh, Shannon is one of the coaches. And it's our job first to let the person talk. Uh, we can respond to what we heard, but only after we hear the story and they, you know, they get a chance to pause, grab a breath. When we start to reflect back midway, it's like we continually interrupt them. Let them talk, let them get it out, then reflect back. Great. Um, let's see here. Just a couple more just comments. Thank you, Ginger. It's good to be reminded of all these important points. Yay. Yeah, that's definitely. And I think in today's the virtual, um, not as face to face, it's, it's especially important. Absolutely. And I think this is here to stay. We're, we're going to have more of this. If, if anything, the current pandemic has shown how much people are willing to pivot to do things online, to order products, to have discussions, to have classes, uh, to take it online. Great. 
All right. I, I don't see any more questions in the chat pod. If uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording at this point. If, if you have any follow-up comments, uh, please share those. I'm going to stop recording now. <laughs>